his first season. NBA veteran for a long time, but now he's so. Uh, on the college ranks for the first time in his career. Well, he's a Hall of Fame coach. He was uh, he was an incredible player as well, and a, a general manager, an assistant coach, and he's done everything, a wealth of basketball knowledge there on the sideline for Tulane. And it's the sophomore, Melvin Frazier, tipping it into the backcourt, and it belongs to the Green Wave first. Frazier lobs it underneath here for Malik Morgan. Drives to the paint, shot no good. Offensive rebound, Ryan Smith with the follow-up. I think you'll see a lot of that tonight from Smith. Uh, Tulane's wings will post up smaller guards, and Smith is always there to clean up the mess. There's our officials for tonight's ball game, Antonio Penny, Rick Randall, and Archie Whaley. With the basketball is Burr. Into the corner for Hill, and they run it underneath, and it's Poche with McNeese doesn't spend a whole lot of time on offense. They like to run. You no, know, they want to push the tempo. Wouldn't be surprised to see a little press as well. They, they're in lack in size, but they make up for it in speed. And we've got contact out on the wing, and a foul here against McNeese here in the early going, and it's going to go against Liberius Hill, the junior out of Alabama. Some struggles for McNeese State this year. They do not start first half well. Actually, they're very, very good in the second half. But they have characteristically been a poor first half starting team. Well, they've given up some points. And so here is a drive into the paint by Morgan. Her team that scores about 71 points a game, but they've allowed 87 points per game this year. Yeah, it'll come off of bad shots a lot of times, too, as they don't do a good job of getting back in transition trying to talk and communicate and match up. They lost by eight on Saturday at home in North Carolina, but their head coach said they played a lot more better. They seem to have a lot more poise in that. Yeah, coach Simmons said that it might have been their best 40 minutes of basketball, even though they, they lost the game. It was a complete game from every uh, every player, and they were healthy, really, for the first time all year as well. Tulane up by a bucket. Here's Burr. He makes it happen. Shot no good. Rebound pulled down by Morgan for the green wave. It's a dangerous thing for easy, opponents easy. when they're playing Tulane. Is just about everybody except for Smith. As you see, a nice little backdoor pass. Anybody who grabs a rebound except for Smith can push it in transition. And when they get out and it's a two-on-one or three-on-two fast break, they are lights out in transition. They can knock down a three, and they have some serious athletes that can get up for a couple highlight dunks. Yeah, you mentioned Rayana Embo and how much fun he's been to watch. This is a freshman that has a little size, has a little length, and he's really been able to uh, come within his own here in the last two. He doesn't play like a freshman. And he has a little bit of that upperclassman calmness to him, but what makes him really good, he's a tall a point guard who can defend motions, and he is locked down in one-on-one -on -one scenarios. Now Frazier misses the free throw, so here comes the Cowboys running it up the other way. Poche has the ball kicked by Frazier, another guy with length. He's a 6'5 sophomore that sometimes plays out on the wing. I really like his game, too. He can guard multiple positions. A lot of those, all these Tulane players can, but Frazier, we want him to be more aggressive. That's what Coach Dunleavy says. He's always looking for Frazier to attack the rim more with a consistent effort. Shot by Greenwood off the mark. It goes out of bounds. There's the veteran head coach, Mike Dunleavy, wearing a baseball cap here today. It's not a fashion statement. As, as cool as he looks, and I will admit, he looks pretty cool wearing that hat. He's, uh, it's for uh, medical reasons, and it's just be kind of a, a one-off deal, and, and I think he looks great. I'd, I'd love to rock that. I know when you put the suit on and add a ball cap, I think it's a good look. Big-time look. <laughs> not a lot of people get a coach done leaving. No one's going to say a word. Ball got knocked out. It remains Cowboy basketball. So McNeese will set to inbound it here is Lance Poche. And they get it up for Burr. 301 career history, and a career assist, 11th in school history. He's certainly getting it done. Drive into the paint there by uh, our favorite name, Steven Hugo Chuku. It's a great last name and a great move to the bucket. A little sidestep to split the defense. As you take a look at this uh, replay, probably coming after the free throw here. He is, uh, he is the difference maker. He's got a a chance to be a double-double guy every time he steps on the floor. And he missed about three games this year. 
with injury, and uh, they can be really a force down low for Denise State. Under 50% from the free throw line, he misses both of them there. He missed three games with a sideline, with a uh, with a hamstring injury that sidelined him for three games, and he, came, he really missed four because he missed early in that Memphis matchup. And those hamstring injuries are the worst. There's nothing you can do about it, and you don't know when it's coming. Greenwood pushing it up here for Hugo Chuku. They want him ready to go for when the starts. Two games remaining for McNeese tonight. Then they'll travel to Raleigh to take on NC State before they get into conference play. Burr from the left wing. And he drives, gets a shot up, no good, but a nice follow-up there by Hugo Chuku. And no box outs for Tulane. Tulane's got the size advantage. McNeese not known for its rebounding, and yet they're getting some early boards. Smith with the shot, and it's good. You know, when you see plays like that from Smith, you kind of look at him and say, why can't you do that all the time? And I think he's just starting to get a little bit more confidence in this Dunleavy system. All right, 17 points, a career best for him in their loss to St. John's. That's a two, and it's good. Here comes Tulane. You know, you hit a shot like that. You better get back defensively. Reynolds, we haven't said his name much early. Misses the three. Yeah, and you got to find that guy in transition. He can light you up. And Smith with the bucket. Good charge. They're going to wave it off. So Ryan Smith with the personal. Take another look. Stepped right in, took it in the chest. Oh, I love that during Christmas breaker. Well, you mentioned it early. This is the fun time of year to be a college athlete. Finals are done. Yep. All you have to worry about is practice and play the games. You don't have to, you're, you don't have to worry about taking a test tomorrow. You don't have to get up early tomorrow to go to class. Oh, it's fantastic. I absolutely loved it. But the coaches knew that as well. So sometimes they throw in a two-day there, and you're like, what's going on? This isn't preseason. Make it work. And this shot from the three-point range is no good. Morgan pushing it out. Good pass. Side Great pass. Ryan Smith is in store for maybe a big night. Yeah, and a really, really good pass. But excellent position by Smith and that spin and post and transition. And if you make a bucket against Tulane, you still have to spread back in defensive transition because they're going to push it on a make or a miss. A little contact there, but they're going to get Embo with a foul. So Ryan Smith off to a good start in this one. He's got Tulane out front by three. Making you work. Wow. <laughs> and a Merry Christmas. Holidays here in New Orleans and a couple of days. It has actually gotten to be winter wonderland here to some degree. The temperature is really dipped. It's beautiful, but it is chilly, man. I came flew up from Orlando, Florida, where it's 89 degrees and I'm sweating in board shorts. Forgot my sweatshirt. I'm shaking in my hotel room. It was uh, 34 degrees this morning here in the Crescent City. These guys have come out shooting hot, though. 
As uh, Tulane, four for their first six. Here's McNeese down by three. They made the trip down I-10. About a three, three and a half hour drive from Lake Charles, Louisiana. You know, added motivation to try and steal a win here during the holiday hoop season. Reynolds with the rebound off the miss by Harvey. He just checked in a moment ago. He's a guy that uh, Dave Simmons really wants to get going here today. Excellent outside shooter. Has been struggling as of late. They're going to try and run more sets for him. He's back the other way, and Burr lays it up and in. It's really good in transition. He's quick. He's got a good handle. Aggressive and fearless. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, though. Tempo pushes it up for Reynolds. Wave up by a point. Morgan gets it back. Cameron Reynolds. Good extra pass. And it hits Frazier on the outside for three. We talked about the big 6'5 sophomore Melvin Frazier. He can drain some threes. That one right there is seventh of the season. Well, it's a good shot by Frazier, but man, I tell you, what a beautiful extra pass by Ona Embo. Option inside for Trying to post it up. Now he kicks it back out. Shot for three by Greenwood, and it's no good. Offensive rebound, and Hugo Chuku lays it in. Well, a great job by McGee State of crashing the offensive glass here, but Coach Dunleavy is not happy with the lack of box action. Frazier, and there's a block against McNeese. We talked about this team. Uh, you know, yes, they're playing better, but this team doesn't rebound very well. This McNeese team, statistically, I'm talking about, they have gotten better, but they're off to a good start here tonight. Well, they're fast, they're aggressive. They've been tested. They've played some really, really good opponents. I mean, they played at Purdue, at Memphis. At SMU. At I mean, yeah. they have some... They have experience of playing against great athletes, big athletes. When you play against Purdue, they are absolutely, if you haven't seen them play, look out. Yeah, that's how they started their season. Both of these teams went straight into the fire as uh, McNeese traveled to Purdue. Tulane took on uh, Carolina. That was a great game, uh, the Tulane-North Carolina game. It's uh, the Green Wave scared the Tar Heel fans to death. They came out firing them all soon. Big rebound by Udo Chuku, and now Offensive rebound off of Tulane. It remains. So the wave up by four. But it remains McNeese ball here with Greenwood set to inbound. Gets it in for Harvey. He's had a three in 18 consecutive ball games until Saturday night when he did not drain a three. So 18 of his last 19. Confidence really lacking. You know, when you're a shooter, you even if you're in a slump, you always have to be looking for that next shot and have confidence that's going to go. And you got to trust your form. Trust the hours and hours and thousands of shots you've gotten up in practice. I think they're going to get Reynolds here with a push. Cameron Reynolds picking up the foul. That's his second already, and he's yet to score. And that's their leading scorer. He has scored over 20 points in four games this year, averaging 17 a game. And yeah. he heads to the bench. Yeah, yeah well, I, I, I agree with Coach Dunleavy. I think he's been... Uh, a little too quiet here to start the game. Now, off rest, you should be healthy. You should be chomping at the bit to play. Step to inbounds. Greenwood lobs it in for Hugo Chuku, who goes back to work. And he is fouled. Nine days off without games. That's uh, can. It's not an off season, but it can accumulate a little bit of rust. It can be a catch-22. When you are used to playing a game every two days or every three days, you kind of get in that mold of one or two hard practices, then you have a light practice and a shoot-around. When you have nine days, you know, coaches start salivating, and they, they, they try to get in oh. action, work on things, you know, in the first half of the season that haven't gone well, try to perfect the things that are going right. But as a player, you have to stay locked in. Those nine practices, you have to treat like a game. You get into preseason practice mode, and you step onto the court, it can have a small psychological effect on you. And Chuku converts. Yet it was just when Tulane seemed like they had turned the corner. They had won two in a row, then had that break. Of course, with final exams, you know, you understand why they schedule it that way, but at the same time, it does break a little, little routine, little rhythms. Here's Frazier underneath. And Frazier goes back to work, no good. Off 
offensive board. Got it once, but then Ugo Chuku and running up the floor. You mentioned about lightning fast. There was Jaron Greenwood. He is really quick, too. He is a combo guard. He can play the point or shooting guard for McNeese State. Missed on the shot, though. Couldn't finish. Rayana Embo. James Harvey. So McNeese, a three could tie it here at the 12-20 mark. They set up offensive. Lobs it underneath. Tulane has the size advantage, but it hasn't seemed to bother McNeese here in the early going. Well, so far, Tulane's been most effective in the transition, and they haven't been able to get out in transition because they haven't been able to rebound because McNeese State is crashing the glass with, with uh, taking advantage of Tulane's lack of boxing out. Back to the top of the key for Greenwood. Greenwood gets to Ledoux. He's the freshman, and the ball gets turned over. Embo to Frazier, and he's going to lay it up and in. See Frazier on the wing, and you think, oh no, here we go. I like time. I was ready for it. I think we were all ready for it. Shot from outside, and it's off the iron. No good. Harvey missing the three. Here comes Tulane back the other way. Off the miss. Turn it into two for Kane Harris. A really good push by o. Harris, a gifted athlete. A nice little step through there to get to the rim. And just like that, up seven. Good. Here comes Tulane running it up the floor. Yes. Pops it underneath. Ryan Smith. He is using his size today, and he's really getting it done. I don't know if you heard a little bit of that shriek, but that was the shooter's cry. Two hands up. I'm open. I'm open. Send it to the big fella. Nice play there. As here comes Tulane on the break. Frazier laying it up and in the wave. Leading this one by nine here as we go to a timeout. Thanks, Scotty. Yes, sir. He's running up the steps. Oh, no. Tulane, eight for its first 13, shooting 62%. Meanwhile, McNeese, five for their first 15, shooting just 33% here in Big differences, two things. Transition offense for Tulane and poor transition defense for McNeese State. Tulane, we know, loves to get out and push the ball and run and has ignited three fast breaks in a row for Tulane, but 14 points in the paint. And Ryan Smith has been really active, taking advantage of the lack of size for McNeese State. Eight more minutes for Smith. Here's a shot from the outside, and Ooh. that range in Caleb Ledoux, a highly touted freshman. And he can squite it up, and you see that little jab step, step back move? Man, that's tough. If you get confused at times, Caleb Ledoux is number 11. Jacob Ledoux is his twin brother, number 23. So if you think I'm Ledoux, multiple times it could happen as there sometimes is two on the floor they'll, they'll play together and they'll play separately it's a very talented freshman duo for dave sims 
He had 16 in Caleb Ledoux in their loss in Dallas to SMU. Reyes, he's going to go back to work. Ball got knocked away and a foul against McNeese. Brian Smith is doing a really good job of posting up, and, and Own Embo actually missed him twice on the swing with McNeese State sitting in a zone. So set to inbound it here on the baseline is Frazier. Frazier using almost all five seconds, finally gets it to Kane Harris. Smith trying to post up. He's had some success early. Reyes now back to Smith, and this time it didn't connect. Well, that high-low against the zone can work, but you can't throw it <laughs> your teammate. That's it, it was so close to being right, but Reyes has to be uh, a little bit more pinpoint than that. 10-15 remaining. The first half action, wave up by six. James Harvey with the basketball. Harvey from three, and that's an end that comes up short. Confidence, you know, when you've had an 18-game streak, and then you go for five and don't hit one, he's missed his first two tonight. But that's actually not his shot. He's more of a catch-and-shoot three-point shooter, and anytime you try and take it off the dribble, he isn't really very confident in attempting that move. Ando, trying to get it in for Reyes. Reyes trying to work the offense. Kane Harris score coming off the bench. Nice feed, Smith. Another bucket, he's got double digits. I keep working the perimeter on the zone, letting the defense break down and go right into Ryan Smith because he has found a way to make McNeese State pay. And another turnover here. So the lead is eight. As Tulane trying to add to it as they head back on offense as we get some substitutions for both teams. Blake Paul coming off the bench, giving Ryan a little bit of a breather. He's been the hot hand. Yeah, well, actually, I was about to say, Blake Paul has been really good uh, for Tulane last couple games. He had 10 points against Southern Miss, one of his better games of the season. Yeah, he's had back-to-back double-digit scoring in his last two. Also had a dozen against Southern. Harris. In trouble over there. Finally to get it out of there, and it's stolen by Hugo Chuku. Pull up for three. Shot no good. Now, sometimes with these team this season, when you, you look at the scouting report, sometimes they hurry a shot. A little run and gun. Uh, they'll have a tendency to do that. They have skilled offensive players, but sometimes it's a, some overconfidence on a few shots like that last one. Rambo gets it into Reyes. Reyes will fire from 17. Shot no good. Hugo Chuka with the rebound, pushing it out here for Ledoux. McNeese State will run that, uh, run their motion offense. It's a little dribble weave. Not too much more. Can't get anything to work. Shot clock running down, and he hits the big shot there. There is uh, number 10, Jaron Greenwood. He can shoot, man. If offense breaks down, give it to Greenwood one on one. Make it pay. Not that one to fall. They had the fewest amount of three-point attempts the other day against NC Central. As a club shot, just 15 of them. Paul with the rebound. Why would Paul try to dish that out? I don't know. He had an open right shot, up. right? Yeah, go right back up. I guarantee you that'll be on the film session. Kane Harris, good ball movement here. Frazier for three. No good. Paul had the ball knocked away. And Burr. As it slipped away. They were trying to run it too much. Here comes Chuku. Ooh. Harris misses. Rayona Embo misses, but Paul Frazier three times a charm, no. And now a jump ball in possession goes to McNeese. Well, nine days off, maybe a little bit rusty, but McNeese stayed hanging in tough with Greenwood. A little shake and bake, rise and let it go.
a ball game here in New Orleans. Happy holidays. There's a look at the uh, quarter. Some jackets warm tonight as uh, temperatures have cooled down. And well, Tulane came out hot shooting. They're nine for their last 20. McNeese was cold early, but they've heated it up. Seven for the last 19 at the moment. Yeah, Tulane has turned the ball over. They're knocking shots down, but they have five turnovers right now. McNeese State taking advantage. Works it underneath here. Trying to hesitate nice. for a moment. It works. Shot good by Thomas. So just like that, what has been a pretty big lead here for Tulane, they led by nine, has been cut to three. Morgan. Back at top of the key now for Cameron Reynolds. Really, the zone has been the difference for McNeese State, slowing Tulane down. They haven't really quite figured it out yet. And the shot from outside, Slater, no good. And McNeese starting to get downs as well. Tulane was cleaning up early. Ledoux. Both teams getting some players in there today. Using their bench. Absolutely. Ugo Chuku with the bucket. He's tough, man. I I'm telling you, he has got tremendous amounts of energy and wonderful body control. Oh, dangerous pass. Yeah. Reynolds back in there after a breather. And Malik Morgan from downtown. And he's capable from three. He's not always going to look to catch and shoot from three, but extremely capable. This Tulane team is very good from the three point line. They are actually third in the American in three-point field goals per game, making about eight every time they lace him up. Sit back outside, shot from the outside, no good. Offensive rebound pulled down by Thomas, and he gets a follow-up. He's been a nice pickup off the bench as he's quickly got four. Taking advantage again of no box outs for Tulane. I think uh, tomorrow, Coach Dunleavy might be doing some old-school boxing out drills. Tulane plays in their next game on Friday. And there's a miss. Hugo Chuku with the rebound. And here comes McNeese with a chance to tie after trailing by as many as nine. Ledoux from the outside. And it is good. I mentioned a chance to tie. They take the lead. I sense tired legs for Tulane. And McNeese State is all over the floor right now. As you can see, steal by Ledoux. He's got the hot hand. I'd go right back to him. And they take the lead with the three. Then a quick turnover. And now McNeese showing some poise here and running some offense. Thomas has been inside a couple of buckets. Here's Ledoux from the outside. Shot a little long. Morgan with the rebound. Well, Ledoux, he brought his fall through down quickly. Thought he was going to make it. Got a hold of fella. There's Reynolds from the outside. Bangs it home. Cameron Reynolds, his first points of the afternoon. That should get him going. He's one of the top three-point shooters in the American. One of the top scorers in the conference as well. Back-to-back double-doubles for him. As here comes back the other way, and the shot rims in, and it's good for Lance Pochet. You know, it's all one-on-one -on -one play for McNeese State right now. They're just taking Tulane off the dribble, and nobody is in the gap for the green wave. Morgan. Back out for Harris. Shane Harris shot no good. Loose basketball coming away with it is Hugo Chuku. And here comes McNeese with a chance to take the lead once again. Ledoux works it over here to Hugo Chuku. He drives, shot rimmed in and out. And Reynolds scoops up the loose ball. Tulane's going to want to run some type of set here or just give him to run. Yep. Got it. One, two, three. So Cameron Reynolds turns it over. Back and go. Cameron Reynolds, the team's leading scorer, finally gets on the board. McNeese, Tulane, all knotted up at 28. <laughs> Tough, man. Tough.
We need you to be quicker, Scotty. You got to be quicker. Yeah, this is good. Wow. He got it up. up. Wow. Yeah, I mean, quick. I mean, since the was 14 8, the last one. Wow. Turnovers, man, kill you. They got seven. With no pressure. Fogelman Arena in Devlin Fieldhouse, Uptown New Orleans. We've got ourselves a pretty good game here with 339 remaining in the first half, all tied at 28. McNeese State zone has been, Tulane has not been able to figure it out, and they're turning the ball over. Seven turnovers right now for Tulane, and McNeese State has actually tied Tulane for points in the paint with 16 apiece. Dew gets it inside here for Thomas. Picks it back out. Good ball movement here. Thomas. They've hit some threes. There's a shot by Greenwood. That was just in the three-point arc, and it's good for Jarius Greenwood, for Jaron Greenwood. Man, his dribble jumper is tough. It is quick off the release. Underneath now for Frazier. Tulane got off to a great start, up by nine. You mentioned, Cameron Reynolds for three, no good. Loose ball taken away. Poche running the floor here. Ledoux, he'll it up for three, and he hammers it. That's a heat check shot. That's a heat check for Ledoux. Catch and rip from about 29 feet. Why not? He's hit a couple already. So Caleb Ledoux coming off the bench has been a spark plug. He's got nine. Shot for two lane, no good. Reynolds thought he had the rebound, but no. Pulled away by McNeese. Running it up the floor. And now they'll slow it when he on the shot clock. Fine Ledoux. Go right back to him. I'd go to work right here. Ledoux on the right wing now. <laughs> you got you got Greenwood too, who's been very good. He's got five. And it's all one-on-one, -on -one, Tim. There's not a lot of movement on the offense. Man. It's just one-on-one -on -one play. Tough. Greenwood Physical. drives. How about that body control, man? Are you kidding me with the little fella? Taking the contact. Jaron, but coming off a good ball screen, take it in the chest. Use your body as a shield. Man, that's tough. Greenwood's good. He's got a really, really explosive first. Sophomore. He can run the point. He had six assists against North Carolina Central to go along with 15 points. And he's got the three-point play, the old-fashioned. So there's a little chatter right now between both teams going back and forth here. He is up to eight for McNeese. Works into the corner. Smith is back in. Remember, he got off to a great start. They're just, Tulane is just passing it along the perimeter. There's no dribble penetration when you're trying to attack the gaps, except for right there. That was actually a good look. But someone finally tried to attack the zone with a dribble. You've got to get the defense to suck in or shift. There's Poche, Greenwood. So McNeese on a little run here as they've built their lead to eight. Just over a minute left in the half. I just really don't see the energy or the fire for Tulane to someone just try and get a defensive stop. Hugo Chuku, a shot clock was expiring, no good. And Tulane grabbed the rebound and stepped on the baseline. I tell you, you know, Howard's been really good for McNeese State. He's been that big body underneath trying to push Smith or Reynolds or anybody who's down low for offensive rebounds. And he's a transfer, doesn't get a ton of minutes, but he's really played well, average minutes a game. I think he's been great tonight. 51 seconds to go. Hugo Chuko nearly turned it over there. Finally gets it into the hot hand of Ledoux. Ten on the shot clock. Ledoux looked for Thomas, and the ball got knocked away. Frazier to the two-lane. Long pass. And Rayana Embo will lay it up and in. 
wonderful pass by Frazier looking ahead again to good in transition. But Tim, you know, it's it's just simple. You can't get out in transition if you don't get stops and rebounds. They're not boxing out of the defensive end. So the shot clock is off. It looks like McNeese will hold for the final shot. Why not? You're up by six. You got momentum on your side. Yeah, no question. I'm going, I mean, Green looks good. I'd like Ledoux to get the ball here. Greenwood will take the shot, and it is no good. Rebound Reynolds, and that's how the half ends. Uh, runs. Tulane had a lead as many as nine. Halftime statistics here, as you see, the rebounds were advantage Tulane to the half until really the final two, three minutes. I can't believe it. And, and rebounds is always an effort stat. And, and I don't think that Tulane is given the effort that Coach Dunleavy wants in this first half. Expect a little fiery halftime speech, and we'll see if Tulane responds. So our score here at the halftime is McNeese up by six. Second half coming up next. This is the American Conference on ESPN. Just about ready to get started. Second half, it's McNeese up on Tulane, 36 to 30. Tim Grubbs, Mike O'Donnell joining you here from Fogelman Arena in Devlin Fieldhouse. Let's see how they come out here in the second half. I'm really interested in how, especially how that first half was. Tulane, almost all Tulane for the first 10, and then the second 10 really seemed like McNeese took over. I think Coach Dunleavy's interested to see how his team <laughs> comes down the first half, too. But if you're McNeese State, I'd sit right back into that 2-3 zone. No need to change what's not working. Cameron Reynolds. He's been limited here in this first half. He had just three points, reigning in that 1-3. They need to get him going early. The Cowboys are sitting in that 2-3. Ayana Embo into the corner. Frazier, ball movement, dumping it in for Smith. Smith had a lot of easy shots early. Hook there, not going to go. Yeah, he needs to be about a foot and a half closer to the rim on that baby hook shot. That was a little too deep for a baby hook. Big fella. Man, as he come off the bench, the transfer, Howard Thomas, plays it up and in. He's been great. He's kept the game really simple, and he's a game through energy and effort. Rayana Embo kicks it out. Cameron Reynolds open for three. And a really good skip pass by Morgan. Knew exactly where Reynolds was, was one pass ahead. I love it. So the lead is back to five. 
back over to Greenwood. Now they do all this, you mentioned this weave offense and keep the center in place. Now the ball gets knocked away and an unforced turnover there and Thomas trying to make a pay for it. No good, but gets the follow up. It's all energy and it's all effort for McNeese. They're just out working the green wave. Sit in here for Smith. You know, Tim, sometimes you can just throw scheme out the window, and the team that just brings the more uh, more energy and effort is a lot of times going to get the W. Ooh. Baseline drive, and it oh, good. But this time, there's a whistle. I was about to say, that was some serious energy and effort by Morgan. <laughs> Catching and ripping along the baseline. This was about to be a little Sports Center poster. Well, we've mentioned it. Tulane at times this season has really been able to light it up with some highlights. And Morgan misses. Pretty good free throw shooter, 83% on the year. They're actually the number one free throw shooting team in the American Conference. Second free throw, good. So he makes one of two, the lead is six. Mike Dunleavy looking on. Little token pressure by Tulane. Here's Ledoux, who came off the bench and had nine, hitting three threes in the first half. And now we've got contact and a Tulane foul. Greenwood is quick, man. He is quick and he is deceptively strong. He catches the, he catches it with that little jab step and blows right by you. In. We've been surprised here on a couple of players who've really stepped up. Here's Yugu Shuku who will bucket in. You know, we highlighted Jemiah Burr. We expected him yep. to be the electric guy, but it's been Greenwood. Here's Smith the other way. Lays it up and in and one. Chance for a three-point play. It's a good smart play by Smith, but to go back to your point, Tim, you're exactly right. It's been the players that we didn't anticipate talking about as you watch Smith play the angle here. Catch and spin. That's a grown man move right there. That is smooth. So Smith at the free throw line here. And he's going to be short on the free throw. Normally a pretty good shooter there, too. He had 17. That's his career best against St. John's. He's got 12 already tonight. Ledoux. Looks it underneath here for Thomas. And Thomas has got blocked, but contact. Yeah, Morgan came from the weak side and tried to block that. But as soon as you swipe down, he almost tried to use a haymaker block. And if you miss, chances are you're going to get a foul call. So going to the free throw line here will be Howard Thomas. And the shot is a little long, no good. 47% free throw shooter. Here's another look. Watch this MMA haymaker from Morgan just came <laughs> right down. That's a good adjective there as you watch it in the replay. Well, if you're going to come from the weak side, you never want to swipe down. You need to either swipe up or you need to swipe across. So he misses both. Rayana Embo pushing it up the floor here. Two lane down by six. Reynolds finds Malik Morgan is trying to create, and he gets fouled. Morgan averaging uh, 10 points a game. He's their team leader in assist. But so far today, Morgan with just six. Well, you can't give up the left hand on Morgan. Uh, you know he's left-hander in the Sky Report, and he's, he can drive right. He's very capable. But if he has an opportunity to catch and rip and go left, it's game over. So Morgan missing the free throw. Second free throw is good. So one of two there for Malik Morgan. I think you see a little token pressure for Tulane, just trying to do anything and everything to energy back up. You want to try and get a deflection like that. You can see the assistant coaches on the bench screaming for some effort and energy to just kind of wake up. But it's been all McNeese so far. When we're talking energy and we're talking effort, it's been the Cowboys hands down this game. Bob 
keeps it underneath. Good move. Wow. Very nice move here from Yugo Chuku. And a near turnover right in front of the two-lane bench. Well, Choo Choo Kachu down there on the baseline. What excellent footwork for the big fella. They're going to inbound it here. Works it around now for Rayana Embo. Looks Good underneath pass. Smith. Nice hesitation, but the shot blocked. Second time, no. Hugo Chuko comes away with it. Smith caught it high. Didn't really get much elevation on that play, but Ugo Chugo, right place at the right time, and then knocks down the jumper. Are you kidding me with this kid? He is big time tonight. That's picking it up on both ends of the floor. You get the block, and then you come back and get your 15th point of the night. Frazier working it inside now, and they're going to find Morgan. Thought maybe he would take it there, but still plenty of time to work the offense. And Frazier will be fouled on the baseline. Really good pass. That's part of that uh, somewhat of that simple triangle, that NBA triangle offense that Coach Dunleavy is going to continue to add more and more wrinkles into Wave, get comfortable with it. But that mid post catch by Smith and backdoor look, that's a designed play and read by the Green Wave's offense. So at the free throw is Frazier who connects. 70% free throw shooter. So substitution made here as uh, Jemiah Burr returns. Well, now you got three scores in for McNeese State. You got Ledoux, you got Burr, you got Greenwood. All capable, not only attackers, but three-point threats as well. Burr averaging over a dozen a game, has two today. He is preseason all Southland Conference first team. He averaged over 15 a contest a year ago. But it's been Greenwood. He's been running the offense here today, and it's kind of the spotlight. You, you might see a transition for McNeese State. Burr might be better off the pole than he is as a point guard. Thing, we're going to have a foul here against Cameron Reynolds. And so, the back. timeout on the floor here. McNeese, Steven Yuguchuku, do it on both ends of the floor against the block. McNeese up 46-39. So it's it's almost as if I didn't want to say this on air, but it's almost as if they're just sleepwalking through this game. I mean, really, it has not been good. No, but they're just you don't see that kind of like you. I'd almost want to see some panic. Yeah, a little bit. You know what I mean? Urgency, correct. Thanks, Scotty. Double-double already for Ugo Chugo. <laughs> Making him work. Back in New Orleans, it's McNeese up on Tulane, 46 to 39 here at the 1537 mark. Nine second chance points for the undersized McNeese State, and they are out rebounding Tulane as well. Just effort, intent, more aggressive on both ends of the floor. The Cowboys are bringing it tonight, Tim. They really have, and I mean, they got off to a slow start, but ever since that, what was it, eight, nine minutes into the ball game, they were down by nine. They've really turned it on. Great adjustments, and their offense has been terrific. And they're going to turn it over. I think that, that ball was tipped, actually. One. But there just really isn't that sense of urgency by the green wave. I mean, it's, it, it's not as if they're up four or five and trying to coast here. 
We saw Coach Dave Simmons. I don't think he agreed with that call right there. He did smack in front of him. I didn't either. I think uh, I think it was tipped as well. So here comes Tulane, down by seven. Ball knocked away, and Ugo Chuku has already got a double-double tonight. Oh, just a lazy pass by Reynolds. He's telegraphing it. Bringing it up the floor. Jemiah Burr, he's the senior. This is a yes team. They only have two seniors on the roster. Six out of their 11 players are either freshmen or sophomore. Has been a big shot the corner. And there's a big bucket from Ugu Chuku from the outside. That's not really part of his game, but he's hitting it. He's on fire tonight. <laughs> I mean, playing out of his mind. Nine point advantage, matching their largest lead of the night for the Cowboys. Tulane trying to get something going. Here's Reynolds' shot. No good. Rebound for Morgan. And shot. No good, but he'll head to the line. Smart pump fake by Morgan. On the other end, it's not like McNeese State is doing anything crazy. They're not running this elaborate offense that's confusing Tulane. It's all one-on-one -on -one battles. They're making shots, yes. Yeah, sometimes you have teams that just make shots. They're just coming into where they're on fire, and it happens. But Tulane hasn't really done the one defensive effort that I think Coach Dunleavy would like them to. It's almost as if they're just saying, we'll go ahead and take another shot. Here, go ahead and take another one. And then McNeese State's sitting there saying, sure, I'll take them. That's an early Christmas gift. So Reynolds heads back to the bench. You know, he hasn't played a ton today. He averages almost 36 minutes a game. He's been their guy that's been out there almost all the time. Got into early foul trouble today, and here he is heading back to the bench. Well, they haven't really needed him for the most part. Uchuku, top of the key for Ledoux. Looking underneath. Jemiah Burr looked like he wanted to take the shot, decided against it. Great look there, and Laberius Hill gets fouled. Just hit his 300th assist last game, good for 11th all-time in McNeese State history. We saw a nice little dime there on that last play. Watch this snow look. Boom, thread the needle. I like it. You talked about uh, telegraphing a pass. Well, how about that look right there as he was looking at complete motion. Misdirection, Tim. That's what, that's what we call that. <laughs> Very nice. And Liberius Hill misses. He is a 50% free throw shooter. Second opportunity. And it is good. And the lead is back to nine. Here comes Ray Ana Embo. Looks underneath for Smith, and he took yep. a couple of steps. Yeah, he tried to make the move before he got it. I, I think uh, that happens a lot to players that were just really too excited before they get the ball. And a name that we haven't really talked about much for Tulane is own Embo. We haven't really said his name on the defensive end or the offensive end. You know, his defense was very good. He's the stop. You know, Coach Dunleavy called him a defensive stopper. He really played great in the road win against Southern Miss. You saw him play outstanding here against Southern. And I don't know if it was the time off or what, but they got out of rhythm. Well, he's quiet. He might be having a little bit of a freshman game. As much as I hate saying that, coaches don't like saying that, but it happens. And there he is again, the big fella, knocking down from the foul line. If you got to guard him from that area. You have to find him around the free throw line because he's going to make you pay. Steven Uguchuku having a big day. He's got 19 points. And the dangerous thing, if you do crowd him, he has the ability to put it on the floor and make a play. He is a dangerous player. They really missed him those three games. I think it's very obvious. The point of this offense. Brianna Embo, shot no good. Smith battling for the board. Not going to come down with it, but Frazier does. Loose ball. Frazier goes up and gets fouled. That's yeah, a right call. Hugo Chugo doesn't like it, but that is the right call. He's going to call that every time. Frazier really never seemed like he had the ball. I mean, and then he finally, it was amazing how he was able to control it, but really had it. A little bit of a haphazard play, but, yeah. but sometimes as a player, 
if it's one of those kind of loose ball dribbles, one thing I hate doing is, is ever dribble, trying to dribble out of a loose ball situation. That is a coaching no-no. But Frazier caught it and went to try to go straight towards the rim. And sometimes it's all you can do instead of giving up a turnover because a bad shot is always better than a turnover. Thing on that. 12 points on the night for the sophomore, Melvin Frazier. And here's the shot. Oh, took a step. Labarius Hill turns it over. It's the second time we've seen happy feet tonight. Now he was open and wanted to take the shot, took a step. Everybody's a little too excited for Christmas morning. Still got some work to do. Both of these teams have another game later in the week. We mentioned McNeese will travel up to take on uh, NC State out of the ACC. Tulane will play Texas State here on Friday afternoon. Smith. Good ball face. No good. Loose ball and coming away with it is Frazier. Second time Smith has tipped it to his teammate on the offensive end. He's the guy right now that's providing the most energy for Ayanna Ambo gets it over. Kane Harris. Ball knocked away. Kane. Kane's a guy that delivers a lot of, you know, spark coming off the bench. He's got two today. Let's see what he can do here as he launches the three. I was like, wow, would that have been just perfect to play it? He misses badly. No, one dribble jumper into a three-point shot is not his game. Here's Greenwood. Right, the second half shot. No good. Smith battles for the rebound. Trying to just push it too much. Morgan's pass not going to go. Steal by McNeese. Here's Harvey. Waves it off, and it is good for Howard Thomas. How good has Thomas been this game? I mean, if he can provide that type of energy and that type of efficiency on the offensive and defensive end for McNeese, I think they may have found the diamond in the rough player. Yeah, he yeah. points the ball game. He's got eight today. Smith. He'll go to the line. So we got a timeout. 11.35 to go from New Orleans. McNeese with its largest lead of the day, up by 11. Thank you, Scotty. Steven Uguchuku, he's already got a double-double, 19 points, 12 rebounds. Doing everything on both sides of the floor. He has been a force for the McNeese State Cowboys. They're leaving him around that 17, 19 foot range, and he's hit three of those jumpers and leave him in the post, and he has been just out physically, out working all of Tulane's defenders that are being thrown at him. Getting a quick breather here, but 19 points, 12 boards, two blocks, two steals. Going pretty well for him right now for the junior. By the way, McNeese here in the second half, 
8 of 10 from the floor, shooting 80%. They are a second half team. They've been really, really good getting out to quick starts in the second half. Smith at the free throw line here. Converts. So here we go. The lead is now nine. Rayana Embo will pressure. Set up for Ledoux. Now into the hands of James Harvey, who's been quiet here today. You know, kind of a shot. Dave Simmons said they really wanted Harvey to be involved in the offense, and that was going to be their first look. And they haven't needed him. They were going to run some sets for him, but Ledoux and Green would have been so good. They haven't had to go to him. There's another guy that's been great, Thomas. No good this time, and uh, Labarius Hill will get fouled. Just a really, really good pass by Jemiah Burr, even though they didn't get a chance to finish. Almost was another dime. So from the baseline here. Bringing the screener action, got an open look. Bangs at home, James Harvey. What we just said. Wow. We had some plays ready for him. He hammers it. With Ledoux knocking shots down, with Burr making plays in the offense. Now Harvey gets going. They can push this lead pretty quick here if Tulane's not careful. Frazier responds. He gets a bucket, so Melvin Frazier's got 14 for the wave. I try and run something again for Harvey, see if he could get another open look. No need to force it in there. Well, there it is. And he's on the left wing here. Well, he misses the first time. Good kick. Yep. Really good kick. Shot rims out by Jemiah Burke. Up for Frazier. Contact, no call. Ray on an Embo for three. No good. Frazier with the board. Whoa, what a nice by feed. Frazier, yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Get a fresh shot clock and work the offense. Want to talk about athlete? My goodness. He can do some things on the floor as Harris gets fouled. That's how you keep a play alive, coming from the weak side. That's some of that sense of urgency and energy and effort that the Green Wave's been missing. Take a look at this play by, by Frazier. Coming from the weak side, there's a really good skip by Morgan. Catch, make a decision midair, kick out, <laughs> back out to own Embo. Wow. Not a lot of guys can do that. Harris converts his third point of the day. Sophomore out of Chicago. Averages 10 and a half coming off the bench. What do we got, a lane violation here? Lane violation. Sometimes a, a, a tying tell from when you can see when a team going the thing that they do the best is one of the best free throw shooting teams in the conference and they're struggling tonight so it's it, it's sometimes you, you have to look at things what do they do well are they doing things that they can control they're not and they're, they're free throws and that that happens when you're having an off night but if you're having an off night it should be no excuse to bring energy and effort After Burr had a little shaking bank there. Take a look at this pass. One, two, nope. Coming back at you, dropping it. Oh, you got to finish that because that's a great pass. Good block by Smith, though. Gets into the corner for Kane Harris. Under nine to go. Two lane down by eight. And the pass a little high for Smith. Tulane with a chance there and missed opportunity. You can see it all over Ona Embo's face. He is frustrated with his play tonight. Underneath here, Hugo Shuko who goes back to work. As a chance, shot no good. I think he wanted to be fouled. Not going to happen. 
you get the feeling that Smith is starting to figure him out. And he's got a couple blocks in a row, and Smith doing a nice job of moving his feet, but you have to crowd him, or else you go shoot up down a jumper, but you have to be able to ready to move your feet because he's not just going to catch and shoot. He can catch pump fake, do a little dribble drive, spin move, and get to the rim. He's a dangerous player. Tulane going to use Von Julian now on the point. Julian, the sophomore. Back up point guard, knows how to run his team. You know, he played in 31 games last year as a freshman, 16 starts. And Rayana Embo will go to the bench here. The learning moment for Ona Embo. There'll be a lot of things on film session tomorrow with Coach Dunleavy that he's going to have an opportunity to learn, get better. You can't take it as criticism. Smith misses the free throw, rebound, Frazier. Chipping away, and so much of it has come off of the offensive rebounds. That effort stat we talk about. Back at top, Poche. All of a sudden, the lead is six. Crowd, which has been rather quiet here tonight, trying to get into it. Good ball movement for the Cowboys. Big time three there by Greenwood. No good. Offensive board. Nice pull right back out. Good job by Burr. Take your time. Run your offense. Burr with a big offensive rebound. There's Jemiah Burr. Good, they're going to count yes, it. Yes, it is. How about that body control by Burr? That was a little taste of what we thought we were going to see all night. But Burr, little dribble drive on the top of the key, knows how to take advantage of the defense. One, two, pump fake. Oh, I love it. A little rise and grind for the little fella. Thanks, Scotty. Thank you, Scotty. It's got to be good. McNeese looking for its first Division I win of the season, up by eight. Got a lot of work to do, but they're trying to get that first road win of the season, too. They're 0-4 on the road right now. The free throw line here is Jemiah Burr, 66% free throw shooter. And he converts. Burr's been rather quiet tonight. That's his fourth point of the night. I like the token pressure for the Cowboys. Making the green wave think. You take down the shot clock, and now you only have 20 seconds to initiate your offense. Frazier looks underneath for Smith. Couldn't handle the pass. Turnover. Can't throw a post-entry pass with the top of the key. Greenwood so fast. Yeah, ripping up the floor. He's been really, really good. The little fella playing big tonight. Jared Greenwood with another big bucket. He's got 10. 
the lead is back to 11. That is emphatic. Ripping baseline. Wow. Well, you just never know when he gets his hands on the ball if he's going to have a nice pass, great rebound. We've seen all of it tonight, and now sending it home. And he's had two or three plays close to that where he's tried to attack the rim. Rebound Thomas, and he nearly lost it. Saves it here. Back to the top of the key in Greenwood. You think a play like that might get Tulane going, but a big offensive rebound. And now a long possession here by McNeese. Try to disrupt the momentum. And a great decision by Burr. He saw a weak side. There was no help for Tulane. Had an isolation on the right side of the floor. So you take a look at Frazier's dunk. I'm thinking, excuse me, I'll take off from the block. Send that home. <laughs> Strong. So here's Burr. Which Dunleavy does look really cool in that hat. They win, you think he might bring it back. Still some time. We've got some work to do here. Working it around now for Frazier. It's all passes around the perimeter. There's no drive in the gap in the teeth of the defense. There you go. There's one by Julian. Got to finish though. Julian missing. Comes McNeese. I'd continue to work the shot clock if I was the Cowboys. Their bread and butter right now is getting in one on one situations and just making plays. Anyway, from the outside. No good. Rebound here. Outlet for Kane Harris. Kane Harris running the floor gets fouled. A really good pass by Frazier. That was a two handed Kevin, Lug Kevin Love esque pass. Going the full length of the core as you take a look at this. Good pass ahead. Harris knows what to do with it. Go right to the rim. You know a foul is coming. So Harris will go to the line here. And that's not Tulane's problem. They're good in transition. The problem is, is they can't get out in transition because they're not rebounding and they're not getting stops on the other end. You know, came in at giving up 87 points a game, being out rebounded basically every game, and that has not been either one of their issues here tonight. Well, I don't think they played zone very much this year, but I think they may have found their secret to success after the first of the year. That go that two three zone has been really good for them. So Harris fouled and he'll line again. These are the perfect plays for Tulane. It stops the clock, allows you to catch your breath, possibly set up in some type of token pressure. But you gotta make free throws. Those freebies, man, they are key late in the game. Four fouls now on Lance Poche. For McNeese. As Harris converts. Second one, good. Back to a six point ball game. Whatsoever. Drive here and he threw it away. Got a little too much by Burr. He got a little too cute in the, uh, amongst the trees. He has a tendency to do that. Coach, Coach Dave Simmons says he is really, really good, but he'll have a tendency to turn the ball over. McNeese State trying to hang on of 61 55 on the green wave.
I don't know here, Tim. I think um, he might be in a little trouble here. Not really seeing much. We'll see. Better get something going quick here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm trying to be realistic and positive. Is there a word to describe that? Positivistic? <laughs> Your mouth. Shut, Shut your, your mouth when you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Reynolds, quiet. Onembo, quiet. Huge. Yeah, yeah be huge. huge. Coming out of the timeout, 4.26 to go. McNeese up by six. Tulane a little run lately, trying to get back into it. McNeese turn home to go. Well, they need, Tulane needs to force turnovers here. It's not like there's, an, a, there's a lot of time left. 4, 4.26. That was just their you, eighth turnover of the day for McNeese. Yeah, they've done a great job of taking care of the ball, but to, that's because Tulane hasn't really forced them into doing anything. It's just been one-on-one, -on -one, make the right play at the end of the shot clock, and they're knocking down shots. They're hitting outside jumpers. Frazier hits it to Kane Harris, and he could not finish. So Jemiah Burr brings it on up. Take a look at some of the uh, stats here. Two ties, three lead changes. The bench. Lane is led by as many as nine. McNeese is led by as many as 12. The bench has been great for McNeese. 20 points off the bench for the Cowboys, who are nine oh. for the Green Wave. And that's one of the guys coming off the bench. Huge Howard Thomas, and he gets fouled. Keeping so, it simple, nothing special for McNeese. They're taking advantage of one-on-one -on -one opportunities, making the Green Wave pay. Melvin Frazier lighting it up tonight. 16.7 rebounds, and he's had some highlight-type plays. Outside of Ryan Smith, he's been really the only guy to provide a consistent amount of energy and effort for the Green Wave. Doing a little bit of everything, crashing the offensive glass, finding his teammates, and coming weak side, slam. Green Wave trying to get back into it. Well, that was the explanation point here in the second half, and you thought that maybe that would change momentum here, but it hasn't yet. As no, well, it, it can't all come from Frazier, and, and Ryan Smith, is as good as he's played tonight, isn't a go-to guy. They need Cameron Reynolds to step up and make some big shots here with under four minutes to go. Thomas misses. And sometimes if you're not making shots, Tim, 
if you take a look up at the scoreboard and you see, okay, I'm in the bubble. Even though they're in a zone, I need to get to the rim. Let me stop the clock, make some free throws, and you can set up into your token pressure. A couple of big misses here, but another lane violation. Second time that's happened today. At this time, it was Ryan Smith got in there a little early. So you give Thomas a third opportunity. He does not take advantage. Green wave down by six. Plenty of time. 340 to go. Julian came off the bench here to run the offense. In fact, if you look at the five on the floor right now for Tulane. Got a couple of bench players in there, including this guy, Kane Harris, who misfires from three. Rebound, Greenwood. You know what I really like that McNeese is doing? They're not going for a clean rebound every time. They're almost going for the tip to try and tip mates because they know there's only one player for Tulane that's going after the offensive glass, and that's Ryan Smith. Everybody else is watching. Burn. What a dime. Wow, how about that pass, Tim? Are you kidding me? That was smooth. Double digits for Howard Thomas coming off the bench. Frazier. Harris trying to get a hot hand. He misses. Rebound, Reynolds. Tulane cannot figure out the Cowboys zone. They are having a really hard time attacking it. Reynolds kicks it back. 15 on the shot clock. Great defensive possession. Frazier. And yep. an offensive foul. Yep. Perfect spot. Took it right in the chest. Frazier was out of control. Good call by the referee. Take a look and see if there's two feet planted. Yep, you take it right in the chest, not moving. Perfect charge. So 2.19 to go. Nice up here by eight. Now work the clock here. Oh, I wouldn't be, I'm sitting here, if I'm Tulane, I, I'm not trying to be soft here on the ball. I would want to pressure, try and get some type of steal. Like, there steal on the baseline. Frazier got a hand on it and takes it away. Good extra pass. Julian way off the mark on the three. Now he's not a shooter, but you have to take that. Hey, under two minutes here when you're coming back, you have to take your open shots. I hear, I hear a lady in the stands behind me saying, pressure him, pressure him. <laughs> and I agree with you. I agree. Should be pressuring the ball right now. Well, you're down by eight. There's a minute and a half left. Dangerous play by Burr. Five on the shot clock. Now outside. Short, but he gets a rebound. Jamaya Burr stands at six foot tall as one of the shortest guys on the floor got the rebound. It's a great rebound, but I don't like that play. I mean, if I, I'm grabbing amongst the trees, I'm back up into the trees. I'm going <laughs> to pull that back out and try and run another 30 seconds off the clock. See, that's where... That's where a little bit of that, you know, run and gun type play. Would you like to see Burr pull that back out, be a leader, be the point guard, and try to initiate offense and make Tulane work for another 30 seconds? Now they got away with it because it's still McNeese basketball. They might be out of time right now. You need to go for it. You need to go for some steals. You got 12 on the shot clock here. You need a defensive stop. Kicks nice it out. Shot no good. You need that rebound, and he doesn't come up with it at McNeese ball. Except for it again. Oh, now you got a foul, right? 59 seconds to go, down by eight. Mm. Or go for they the call steal a, first. A foul or out of bounds, so they called a foul. I think you're going to take a look at it. Take a look at the replay. I'm thinking, you know, you go for the steal first, but if they get it in, you can't let them work 30 seconds off the shot clock. No, absolutely not. You got to go for a steal, maybe two steals, and then you got a foul. Uh, you can't with with 30 seconds left in the shot clock. It's a full, it's, it's a full clock. They're going to try and work that down. You know the foul's coming. Look if we could see who it is out on. Looks like it hits Reynolds last. It probably is going to be Cowboys ball. Yeah, Burr and Reynolds both fighting for the loose ball. And it looks like, yep. Yeah, Burr hit off. it first, and then Reynolds hit it second. He tried to do a little 
little acting. It wasn't trying me to sell it. Deal. Yeah, well, you got to. You got to. The Cowboys have been great. They've done really, really good. It's been a simple execution of the game plan. They've taken advantage of one on one situations. They're not running anything crazy. They've been really, really sound and physical in the two, three. And I think as much as the zone's been good, but their back line across the, the three uh, on the two on the bottom of the two three zone has been really active boxing out and rebounding poche running it out 50 seconds remaining you probably probably got a foul here i would uh, i would think and once they yeah, got it coach Sully's and now they do for it. reynolds will foul them that'll be a foul but you know they let 15 seconds roll off the shot clock i don't get that uh, reynolds was was just kind of sitting there watching the play develop you need to get up into your offensive player and foul him so you, get a, you don't just foul to foul you want to swipe for the ball so you might actually get a clean to, to get a open fast break opportunity but ben levy was screaming at reynolds about go for the ball when you foul mcneese team that is a 65 percent free throw shooting team for the season one of two there now you gotta hurry. Down by nine. Reynolds set shoots. Fires. And that's one. You got a chance to go for one quick steal and then foul. You got a foul. Full court pressure here, and they've got him trapped and a timeout. Not a bad play on the trap. Had him trapped along the baseline, and McNeese will use one of its timeouts. They had two remaining. Good timeout by McNeese. You get stuck there in the corner. That's no man's land. That's a dangerous opportunity. You don't want to try and throw it over the top for fear of a turnover. Get a timeout, compose yourself, and be ready for your press break offense. For Tulane, you got to get up in pressure. 28 seconds on the shot clock, 35 for the game. You got an opportunity for one steal, maybe one steal, and then you got to go for a foul. Reynolds has been quiet all game. He's got such a beautiful looking stroke. He didn't really look for his shot much, really at all in the first half and barely in the second half. He's been too quiet. Well, you know, Reynolds had those two quick fouls and got into early foul trouble, went to the bench. And it's a guy that's about 36 minutes a game and he doesn't have nearly that, that, that type of minutes today. And he's a great player and I'm being tough on him, but early foul trouble is no excuse not being aggressive and active when he get in there. Well, Try to get him, and they do foul Burr here, a 66% shooter. Yeah, Burr step up here. You knock two in a row. I would do a little bit of a soft, very, very soft, just so Tulane can't get a clean look. So Jemiah Burr, the senior out of Ruston, Louisiana, connects. And he's had a really, really good second half. Whereas we talked about how he was too quiet and he was basically non-existent in the first half. I thought he's, he was tremendous in the second half. Some really great plays along the baseline, knocking down free throws and getting his teammates involved. An excellent second half for Jemiah Byrne. So Frazier set to inbound in here. Pushing it up the floor. Is Ray on him, knocked out. Well, you have to have some urgency here, down by eight with 29 seconds to go. Catch and go, make a play. I mean, it's the first guy that touches it, you got to go make a play. See, that's not a great pass. Shaky sideline out of. And you're going the wrong direction here. Yeah. You got two or three dribbles to get across the other side of the court, and you got to try and find Reynolds for a catch and shoot. Then you got to hop into your press. Not enough time. Tempo. Looking for Morgan, now finds Frazier. Looking from the corner, and it's good, Melvin. Now he had to go for a steal. Here it is. What a dangerous pass. Oh, my goodness. And now you got a foul. That, you can't get any more careless or dangerous <laughs> than that pass. That was a Christmas gift for the Cowboys. Frazier hit the ball. I think Frazier just picked it up just a little too late as a defensive back. Yeah, I mean, it's, and they needed a three really quick, and Frazier steps up, knocks three. He's had a really good game for the Green Wave, but he's been really the only guy so far being aggressive on the offensive end. It's the shot to roll in. Jaron Greenwood gets his 11th point of the day. Frazier with 19 today. 
hit 22 earlier this season against the Sun Devils. So now you're out of time. 13 seconds to go, down by seven. Shot no good. Rayana Embo with the re make that Morgan with the rebound. So McNeese will end its four-game losing streak, and they'll win their first road game of the year. Well, there's six points left. This is this is miracle time for the Green Wave, Tim. But no, I think you're right. <laughs> McNeese State is, uh, has, has done a really, really good job all game long. This game has the potential for them to catapult them into a couple more wins going into conference play. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw them even in late early February playing that 2-3 zone. I think they may have found their defense. You know, they certainly look like a different team. You know, Coach Simmons talked about in their loss the other day against North Central, they had more poise. They showed patience on offense. They crashed the boards more. They lost that one. But sometimes, uh, you know, you show it paid off here today. Yeah, this is a great snowball game for them, or, or you hope that is. Reynolds for three. Not going to go. And Frazier got, I think, contact. And we'll see who they call it against. That drives you nuts as a coach. There's no reason for that hold. Tim, you don't box out with your arms. You box out with your lower body and legs. Even as a short, unathletic point guard like myself, I know that. <laughs> well, the foul went on one of the heroes of the day, though. Hugo Chuku. Uh, he had 19 points today. And really was impressive. He was good. He was in a one-on-one -on -one situation. He first he got his first couple buckets off those garbage points, those tip-ins kind of late in the shot clock, but then he, just start, he started to develop a rhythm offensive numbers, took Ryan Smith at the top of the key, made some nice plays one-on-one, -on -one, couple spin, spin moves in the post. He was great. Frazier gets over the 21-point mark, and Tulane will use a timeout here, down by five. This is a teaching moment for Coach Dunleavy. This is this is how you get better as a basketball team. Is even though there's 2.9 seconds left, there's no reason why you can't learn from this moment and try and execute that. As as much as that might be a little coach speak and nobody really wants to hear it, that's reality for coaches. That's reality for teams, and that's reality for players. Every moment is a teaching moment, and there there aren't some, there aren't better teachers than Mike Dunleavy, and, and he's still saying, guys. This, here's how we have to do it. This is what we have to do to execute. Because you never know if this same situation, if it's one or two points difference, happens in conference play. And one of 10 active NCAA coaches, a former NBA coach. Of course, you talked about his resume early. He was a great player, too. We talk about how good of a coach he was, general, general manager, but an incredible player in the NBA. Just a wealth of basketball knowledge. When you get a chance to, uh, we get a chance we're lucky we get to watch him during shoot arounds and it is so incredible to see him pour into these young athletes and, and what they're getting from him the knowledge they're getting for him is is, is truly something that they're not only going to get better from but they're going to be able to take with them wherever they go would connect so the lead is now back to six two seconds remaining in this one second free throw is good and a big win today for McNeese and for the Southland Conference. Into Tulane here today and pulling off an upset. And Dave Simmons going to get his first road win of the season. It's a, The film sessions are always better when you win a game. It's a great opportunity to learn and get better after hard fought road win. There isn't a better feeling than that than going into an interstate rival into their home, getting a win during Christmas time. That's got to feel really good for the Mediates. 